I'm gonna make myself a fruit salad because I found a whole web page called Fruits You Should Eat and Fruits You Shouldn't Eat. Bruh. No one is in a bad spot with their weight because of fruit. Okay? Alrighty, guys, gals, nine binary pals. Before we get into the video today, I want to say huge trigger warning for um, any sort of ED. Um, we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about a, a lot of stuff. So just if you struggle with your relationship with food, with anything like that, um, huge trigger warning there. I just want to make that very, very clear. Um, also, if you guys see right here on the side of the screen, if you would like to be part of the chat, we would love to have you. I stream every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday on Twitch at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have a great time, and I know all of these lovely people would love to have you there, so feel free to come by. It's free to follow. You don't have to pay anything. Um, but with that being said, so like I said, today what we're going to be talking about, this is a really, really interesting video, and I thought about how do I talk about this topic, and especially the creator that's making these videos, in a way that I share my thoughts, but I am not trying to at all shame the person the the young lady that's making these videos make her feel bad about it at all okay so that's i want to make it very clear at the start i know very annoying i have a ton of warnings before but that's just how i am get over it <laughs> um i am not at all trying to shame the person that's making these videos so please if you are watching this video and you and you want to leave a comment just try and be kind all right please just try and be kind because that is not what i'm trying to do here but i do think that this is a very interesting topic, okay? Alrighty. So, today we are going to be talking about a content creator on YouTube by the name of Ro Mitchell, I believe is how we pronounce her name. And so, she is doing... Her, her whole channel is kind of based around recovering from um, an ED. I can't say any of the names because I'll get in trouble, but you guys can see it right here if you're, if you're watching, right? So, is recovering from that specific ED. Um, and she seems like a very sweet girl, and I think that, a very sweet woman, and it thinks, I think that, it's interesting because, you know, she is coming from the complete opposite side of the spectrum. You know, someone that is, um, someone that is coming from eating too little, you know, I know it's more, it's more than that. But also, you know, I am someone that came from eating way too much. Um, so we're going to be going over this video, 24 hours eating diet cultures, worst foods, all in Anna recovery slash uh, roar recovery. I think that's kind of like the name of the uh, of like the series that she's doing. Uh, so let's get into it. I'll stop talking. Hello, my name's Ro, and I've suffered with anorexia since my early teens. Thankfully, I'm now in recovery, but still find myself controlled by fears of certain foods. Whilst diet culture and the media didn't cause my eating disorder, I was heavily influenced by its opinions on the foods that I once loved and enjoyed. Many of the fear foods that I went on to develop and thus cut out of my diet definitely stemmed from particular food groups and nutrients being publicly labelled as unhealthy or bad. I'm gradually teaching myself to break away from labelling food and reach a state of neutrality where I accept that no food is going to harm me. So I, I mean... Obviously, already, everything that has been said, I agree with, right? I think that I I really, really dislike how some foods are, these foods are good, these foods are bad. And, like, um, we were kind of talking about, er actually, earlier on the stream, is, like, moralizing foods and being, like, these foods, and I think a lot of people, even people that are trying to lose weight, right, we start to go down this road of, if I eat this type of food, I am now bad. And if I eat this type of food, I am doing good or I am good, right? So, I again, like I don't disagree with anything that's been said so far. So today, I decided to push myself and face the foods that diet culture claims we should avoid. Food is fuel, and no food will harm you more than your eating disorder will. Good morning. Um, it's breakfast time. To start the day off, which is going to be probably one of the most challenging days in my recovery so far, I've got something that diet culture really demonises. When I was looking up foods not to eat or what diet culture tells you you shouldn't eat, sugary cereal obviously came up. I got myself a bowl of white chocolate and raspberry shreddies because I absolutely slated them in my last video. Uh, one, 
the accent is amazing. And two, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is the best cereal. And I don't care what anyone says. Um, now, since then, I've eaten some dry out of the box and they were really nice. So I'm going to try again. The other thing I've got is something that I haven't had in a very long time. And that's orange juice. Again, diet culture says that this has too much sugar in it and that that's unhealthy. And I'm also challenging a rule. Seeing as this is a new thing for me, having orange juice, and I haven't had it in a long time, I'm just gonna free pour it into a glass because putting that barrier in now and you know having a new thing but measuring it will mean that that's gonna be just another thing that I'm gonna have to then learn to not measure. And orange juice- So, <clears throat> this is, so the first thing that I wanna say again, like, do your thing uh it's interesting because you know one and something that i i say and i will continue to say and i don't think there's anything wrong with saying it but uh first people that are coming from the opposite side of the spectrum right they are dealing with they're being their food addicts right they're struggling with eating too much food the first the first thing that i always say is try and cut out liquid calories which would constitute the orange juice and i'm not saying that she's wrong because again it's completely different sides of the spectrum but it's just interesting seeing someone coming from the opposite th opposite end um it's just that's something that's really interesting to me this has been something i feared for a long time too because of the way diet culture talks about it here's to showing diet culture that it can go away <laughs> scared of orange juice for so long when you actually think about it it's literally fruit it's really nice well i mean sometimes it's just fruit a lot of times it's not just fruit that's i think that's what a lot of people have a problem with i'm sorry i'm, I'm just i'm i did that Sugar is a macronutrient that I have really restricted for a long time and something that I've really feared. So overcoming these fears is really important to me. But I also think that sugar just shouldn't be demonized because it makes things taste nice. It's not the- Facts, sugar should not be demonized. It's way too demonized, I agree. Devil. That's all the diet culture kind of stuff that I'm doing for breakfast. I'm gonna get part two of my breakfast, which is toast. And I'm gonna have some honey on it, so. I'll eat that and then I will see you at snack. I'm assembling something that I'm kind of excited about actually because all of it is stuff that I don't fear anymore. But it's all stuff that I have actually found articles on the internet saying you should avoid or that you just shouldn't have. So for snack, I'm making a caramel oat milk latte. There's a whole section about high calorie coffee drinks. And then I'm gonna make myself a fruit salad because I found a whole web page called Fruits You Should Eat and Fruits You Shouldn't Eat. Bruh. No one is in a bad spot with their weight because of fruit. Okay? I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> People are honestly trying to tell you that certain fruits are not healthy. Luckily, I've completely overcome any fear of any fruit. But I know that because of articles like these, lots of people start to think that certain fruits are worse than others. So I'm making a fruit salad of grapes, mango and banana. Don't eat bananas, all right? Don't do it. They sometimes they have knives and they'll cut you. <laughs> Apparently you may want to think twice before eating a ripe banana for breakfast because of the carbohydrate and also apparently- Oh, just, so just a ripe banana, all right. So y'all can eat those green ones that taste like starch. Those are okay. <laughs> apparently the sugar, both of which the body needs. And then mangoes have a larger percent of sugar. It's naturally occurring sugar. It comes from the earth. I really like mango, I haven't had it in ages. Apparently the negative side effects of grapes are way So, okay, so again, I'm kind of kind of interrupt here, but I this is something that's important and something that I think, um, you know, is something that needs to be said. So this is why when I talk about uh, diet culture or when I talk about haze and when I talk about like those types of dietitians where they talk about intuitive eating and eating how you should feel, this is 
most of the time, this is the person that that stuff really helps. And I don't ever want to make it seem like it's not helpful because it absolutely is to this type of person 1,000%, right? And it even, it even is helpful to a certain extent to people that are struggling with losing weight or have lost a lot of weight and are now struggling with keeping that weight off because a lot of people end up getting into this type of thinking when they lose a lot of weight. So I don't necessarily think there is anything wrong with this type of thinking. My, uh, you know, my videos and my channel and stuff that I try and focus on is I understand that this type of thinking isn't for everyone and it's not going to help everyone. And so there's nothing wrong with that. And just like my type of thinking isn't for everyone and it's not going to help everyone. And I don't claim to make it do that right I don't claim that my videos are for everyone and like I'm not saying that she should watch my videos and I would help absolutely not that would be so dumb weight gain and a carb overload great. from grapes whilst I really don't think diet culture is the root cause of eating disorders it completely normalizes disordered eating uh, I like that she says that I don't think that diet culture is the root cause for eating disorders um because there are so many people that, again, will take it too far and be like, it's diet culture's fault. And it's like, okay, yes, that is a problem. But again, you can't take all the responsibility away from the person. It's the same thing with people that struggle with being too large, right? A lot of people are like, well, it's the socioeconomic factors. It's like all that stuff. Yes, that's totally true. And like the fact that there's McDonald's everywhere and all that stuff. Yes, of course, that is a part of it but then to say that's the reason and once we get rid of that everyone will be okay it's not that simple so i i like that she doesn't just say oh it's diet culture's fault it's it's you know there is some personal responsibility that is part of it as well it makes restricting yourself and avoiding foods normal and an okay thing to do like just let people enjoy food for food that was very nice i'm gonna finish my coffee and See you at lunch. I'm currently cooking my lunch, cooking it, assembling it, and I'm having my absolute favorite thing, which does still scare me, but I know I loved it as a child, so I, I try to have it quite often because it, it's like my old happy food. I'm having Richmond meat free sausages on toasted white bread with ketchup and full fat spread because. There's a lot on the internet about processed meats being bad for you. White bread, complete. One, I can't stand that. Your boy eats sandwiches all the time. And again, same thing with bread. I cannot stand, because again, a lot of the stuff that she's saying, she's spitting facts. Like, there are so much stuff that it's like everything is demonized except for like three things. It, it, ugh. Completely like the devil in diet culture and something I really still fear and full fat spread I see so many adverts for flora light and you know light spreads and light butters like kind of marketing them as like the healthy thing when in reality because they're low fat there's actually a lot more chemicals in them it's actually kind of better for your body to be having the fats that it needs white bread and this is my favorite lunch everybody has so many opinions on what's healthy and unhealthy if white bread was so ridiculously unhealthy they wouldn't sell it in the shop it would have like a health warning on it when you bought it yeah and it doesn't because it's just a food well and that's what's frustrating right is um everyone has a different opinion on what is healthy right that's why we, if you ask someone what's healthy everyone's going to have a different definition that's why i don't i try not to use the term healthy and unhealthy very often because what does that even mean right like everyone has a different definition if you talk to someone that does keto they're going to tell you this is what's healthy if you talk to someone that's high carb they're going to tell you this is healthy if you talk to someone that's vegan they're going to tell you this is healthy it's about finding what works for you and also something that I really like in the video, so I've obviously I've already watched this, is her parents are there and they seem very supportive. I just think it's very sweet. This is the best lunch, easily. This is just so nice and I, haven't, I didn't let myself have this kind of thing for so long. It's like, why? Because like, it's unhealthy. Like, no, it's not. What's unhealthy is being obsessed with food having to be healthy. 
like mentally you're not going to be happy if you're literally just obsessed with everything having to fit the standard of healthy food. That was so nice. On to part two of lunch. Which is? Um, I'm gonna. Now, this is something I have every every lunch time, pretty much. But when I was um, doing my doing my research, fruit yogurt came up a lot. What's all that about? Apparently, there's too much sugar in it. Why are you focusing on the sugar when you could focus on the calcium and the healthy fats? Everything that has something that diet culture says is bad also has something that will benefit you in some way. Literally every food you could say that about. It's just it picks and chooses, which is the new food to slate. nice lunch it says please do not let diet culture determine what you can or cannot eat it is not the norm to be scared of any food all foods in this video are perfectly okay to eat and enjoy I'm freaking out. Apparently some things you should never eat do include baked goods and cookies. I haven't had a store bought so again, so one thing I want to say about the last kind of like little clip is, you know, with yogurts, again, it's just different strokes for different folks. I definitely think there is nothing wrong with looking at the different labels and being like, oh, snap, this yogurt has, you know, 30 grams of sugar in it compared to another yogurt that would have, you know, half as much. Again, everyone is different. And obviously what she is going through is going to be different than, again, what someone that is coming from the opposite side of the spectrum someone that is a food addict, just being more aware of that isn't necessarily inherently a bad thing, but it can turn bad again, right? So that's what I think is really, really important, and that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. Like, just because something can be bad, right? I, I kind of was talking about this earlier uh, in the stream. Just because a hammer, you can use a hammer and hurt someone really bad with it, maybe even, you know, kill someone, that doesn't necessarily mean that hammers are bad, the way that that hammer was used was bad, but there are, there are very, the hammer is a very useful tool as well, right? So like just it, making it inherently a bad thing, I think is not always the most helpful thing, in my opinion. Cookie in years and years and years, and they terrify me. And do you know what I'm about to have? I'm never gonna have a store-bought cookie. I'm having a store-bought cookie. And do you know what? I'm really freaking out, like I'm really panicking. Like, I'm, like I feel shaky, but I'm also really excited. That's and that's funny. so nice, like, to, to feel a bit of excitement. <laughs> oh. Even bees getting excited. <laughs> Look at that, that is like the size of my face. That looks very good. That is huge, that's massive. It's almost the size of a plate. It's really big, isn't it? I'm all in. Anorexia's not having any more of my life. In recovery, you need a lot of food and you need a lot of foods that scare you, but you also need foods that society deems as unhealthy. In recovery, your body is crying out for everything it's been denied, so. It's really interesting because it seems very real, right? Like, I, I obviously I can't sit here and say like, oh, is this actually happening or do I like, I don't know, right? But from what I'm seeing, it seems like this is someone that really has struggled in the past and still genuinely is struggling, but is 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 truly trying to work on it and is is filming that for, you know, for other people. Now, that goes exactly into another thing that I wanted to talk about is when we see this, I think a lot of people, their first thought is that shouldn't be on YouTube, right? Someone that is recovering from, um, you know, that type of ED, that shouldn't be on YouTube because that's dangerous. But it's interesting because if we flip it on its head, when we talk about someone that is, you know, a struggling food addict that is sharing them trying to lose weight, that's totally fine, you know? And it's just interesting. I'm not saying whether that's good or bad, but it's interesting because my first thought was also like, oh man, I don't know about this. Like, um, I don't know if this is, should be on YouTube. But the thing is, is that 
the reason that I have that thought is because I honestly do, and you might think I'm that I'm going that, I, that I'm like losing it, but like I do have that genuine same thought when I am talking about people that are trying to lose a massive amount of weight, um, because I do think that it can be dangerous, not just to the the like the people that are watching the video because again there always can be really bad misinformation out there but also to the person that's creating the content right so for this young lady i worry and not because i'm like trying to be weird and like you know i just this is with anybody right that's going down this lane whether they're recovering from this or they're recovering from you know trying to eat less food and they're trying you know they're recovering food addict is because when you start to get a lot of eyes on you and you start to get a lot of support which is nice you also start dealing with a lot of expectations. And I just worry that those added expectations might be overwhelming, not just for her, but for everyone involved. Right? I've seen it happen so many times with people that are trying to lose weight is those added expectations start as a good thing but then it starts to become a little more and more stressful over time and it makes it really hard for the person that is trying to do the thing. And so that's the only thing is like I worry about that a bit and that, you know, that's the only thing is like I just I worry about that. My head's literally just like going crazy. What's it saying? And that's so much and so much fat and sugar. And So how are you going to argue that? Yeah, and I need fat and sugar and I need a lot of food. And I'm actually really, really hungry right now. And this is to show everyone that you don't have to listen to diet culture and you don't have to let it rule your life. I'm not gonna let fears control me anymore. Genuinely a bit in shock. <laughs> you did it. I just ate that massive cookie. That was really nice. Good. My head is just going crazy. It's the whole idea of like healthy and unhealthy. If there was something wrong with people having them, they wouldn't sell them, would they? It's true. It's just a normal snack to eat. Damn, I just ate a cookie like. Wow. Did he? Oh, I'm gonna take my dog on a walk and hopefully upload a YouTube video. But yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to skip to she eats like ice cream because I, honestly, like everything that I say is going to be the same here with all the food. And again, I would I would encourage you to watch her her channel. Go to her videos if that's something that you want to do. I'll have it linked. Uh, but I just there's no reason for me to watch the entire thing. Uh, but let's go back here to when she uh, has some ice cream. All righty. ice cream literally mm. since 2018 like when i was inpatient and even oh. then it was only plain vanilla well all right put your spoon in your bowl pick some up eat it and then you can say the last time i ate ice cream was three seconds ago <laughs> go for it to say i'm gonna do this just another normal thing Ralph. you you've got to be able to normalize it in your life with something that I genuinely don't know the last time I ate them. Salted pretzels. So, little love heart pretzel. I am a fan of pretzels. I eat them very frequently. <laughs> they are really, really nice. I like them. I'm really breaking a rule that I had. And also a rule that diet culture kind of has too. It's about not eating late at night. I still struggle eating late at night. So it's like 9.30 now. See, man, that's one that I can't stand. The whole freaking you can't eat late at night. It's so dumb. I hate it. Um, okay, so that's 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 what we're gonna watch of of this video. And really, the 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 main point that I wanted to drive home that I that I hope that I did was one to have empathy for someone that is you know on a different journey than you. Like just because maybe I can't fully understand and like empathize or like you know put myself in in her shoes. Like obviously, I've never I've never been at that that point. 
But, you know, for me, I did struggle with, you know, losing all of the weight and then struggling with BED and kind of had some similar things. So it's it's just interesting seeing the different side of things. Um, but I, I thought that it would be interesting, you know, kind of sharing my perspective as someone that is, you know, coming from the um, opposite side of the spectrum. But I do want to make it very clear, please, like if you are watching this video and you maybe disagree, um, you know, you can disagree, but if, if, if you are going to write a comment, please be respectful. I would, I, I would genuinely appreciate that. Um, and if you are going to go to her channel, please only go if you, if you feel like you want to offer some encouragement, don't go there and like, you know, obviously, hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from there. Um, but I just thought that it was, um, a really interesting video.